Okay, last time we looked at this reaction where hydrogen gas reacted with iodine gas reversibly to form two moles of HI gas. And we learned that the equilibrium constant, the value of the equilibrium constant for this reaction was 55.6. And of course, we can write the equilibrium constant as being equal to the following fraction, the concentration of hydrogen iodide squared at equilibrium, the squared is because of the stoichiometric coefficient 2, divided by the concentration of each reactant at equilibrium raised to their stoichiometric coefficients, which is 1 in both cases. We're now going to try to use the value of the equilibrium constant and our knowledge of our concentrations of all of these species to figure out whether the reaction is going to move from reactants to products or maybe in reverse from products back to reactants. Here's the way we do this. Let's suppose that we have a system where the concentration of hydrogen is 0.01 molar. The concentration of iodine is also 0.01 molar. And the concentration of HI is 0.02 molar. Is this system at equilibrium? Well, if, if these concentrations, if I take these concentrations and plug them into this equation and I get 55.6, then yeah, then this reaction's at equilibrium. So let's see this. Let's just try it. Now, we can't call what we're about to calculate here Q, or excuse me, K, because K only works when we know that these values are at equilibrium. So what we do is we say, well, we're going we're gonna to test. So we're going to call this Q. And Q has the same form of the equilibrium constant ratios. So it's just going to be HI squared over H2 squared and I2 squared, with the exception that I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to put the subscript EQ down here because we don't know if these are equilibrium values. We're just testing that. And because we're testing it, we're calling this Q rather than KEQ because this only works at equilibrium. We can calculate Q any old time we want to. So let's plug these values in and see what happens. So let's see, HI, that would be 0.02. We'd have to square that. And we're going to divide that by 0.01 for this and 0.01 for our iodine concentration. Let's run the numbers and find out. 0.02 times 0.02, that's the numerator, divided by 0.01, also divided by 0.01, that's the denominator, and we get Q is a value of 4. Because we ran these numbers, and the same form as the equilibrium constant, but we didn't get 55.6, rather we got 4, we know we're not at equilibrium. Now which way is the reaction going to go to get to equilibrium? Well this value of Q is going to help us figure that out in the following way. We ask ourselves, does Q need to become bigger or smaller to get to 55.6? Well that's an obvious question, of course it's got to get bigger. So let's look at our fraction here. This fraction has to get bigger. Well, the most obvious way to do that is to make the numerator bigger. And if we need to make the numerator bigger, chemically, what do we need to do? We need to make the concentration of HI bigger, which means this reaction is going to have to produce more HI, which tells me the reaction needs to go in this direction. We can also think about this from the perspective of the numerator down here. We know that numbers get larger when we divide by smaller stuff. So when we divide by smaller and smaller numbers, we get larger and larger values. So these concentrations need to drop to get us to a higher value. And fortunately, that's always going to work that if, if we need more product, we're also going to need reactant consumed. We need to lose some of this, right? These need to become smaller. Chemically speaking, that means these need to react and produce product. So we see then that as Q is less than K, 
the reaction is going to proceed toward products. It's going to, we say it goes to the right, to the right side, the right side of the equation. Let's say we had just happened to have Q to be greater than K. So let's imagine instead of Q being 4, we just had the situation for this reaction where Q is like 400. Well, if we calculated Q to be 400, we would see that our number needs to decrease to get us to equilibrium, which means for this fraction, the numerator needs to get smaller and the denominator needs to get bigger. And we see chemically to do that, we're going to take this reaction and we're going to move it in this direction. If HI needs to drop, we need to lose HI. If these need to go up, we need to gain them. And we see we do that by moving this in this direction. And we're going to get need to used to thinking about chemical reactions, reversible ones in this way. Not only can reactions proceed from reactants to products, but they can also proceed from products to reactants. But anyway, if Q is greater than K, we recognize that the reaction is going to go from products to reactants. It's going to go in the reverse direction. And sometimes we use the term, the reaction shifts or moves to the left. So with this knowledge, let's see if we can do a particular problem. Let's imagine we have a reaction, this one here, where two moles of nitrogen dioxide gas go to one mole of dinitrogen tetroxide gas at 25 Celsius. And the equilibrium constant value for this reaction is 171. What we do, we do an experiment. We take 1.5 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of NO2, and we put them in a 10 liter flask, along with 2 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of N2O4. We do that, we ask, when we do this, is the system at equilibrium? And if it's not, which way is the reaction going to go? Well, to figure this out, we recognize that the equilibrium constant expression for this reaction is the concentration of our products raised to a stoichiometric power, which is 1, divided by the concentration of the reactants raised to the second power, right? Well, we can also, well, these are, of course, equilibrium values. We can also calculate Q, which are this ratio at any old time. It doesn't need to be at equilibrium. So that's just going to look like this. Same form, but we don't need to make sure we're at equilibrium. So that tells me I need to find my concentration of N2O4 and my concentration of NO2. So let's figure that out. My concentration of NO2, well, that's going to be my moles of NO2 per liter. So it's going to be 1.5 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of NO2 in 10 liter. That's 1.5 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. My concentration of N2O4, what's that going to be? Well, that's going to be 2 times 10 to the negative 3 moles divided by 10 liters. And that's going to be 2 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. Now we can just plug these values into here, calculate Q, see if we're at 171, see if we're at equilibrium. All right, let's pop them in. Here's N204. 2 times 10 to the negative 4, and we need to divide that by the concentration of NO2 squared. So that's going to be 1.5 times 10 to the negative 4 squared. What is Q? 2 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 1 times oh, 1.5 times 10 to the negative 4. I'm going to divide by that one more time. Divided by 1.5 times 10 to the negative 4. I get 8,889. Well, we're not at equilibrium, are we? Indeed, we're not. Q is bigger than K. 
How do we get Q to be equal to K? Well, we need Q smaller, which means we need the numerator to go down, right? And the denominator to go up. And to O4 is on the numerator. Chemically speaking, we need to lose some of our product and gain some of our reactant. And so this reaction is going to shift in this direction. We're going to lose N2O4. We're going to gain NO2. And this product is going to proceed to the left toward reactants in reverse. Reaction in reverse.